Hi, this is a quick tutorial on how to use uh, Adobe Premiere Elements 12 to apply the green screening effect and specifically how to put a shadow in place underneath the character. So it starts like this. We have our character clip here and this is what we are going to apply our green screen key to. I'm going to go and put one in a place right now, but before I do I'm going to use something called a four point garbage mat to get rid of all the fringe details. It's going to make it much easier to key this stuff out. And when I apply it, and when I look into the Apply to Effects window, and click it, I can adjust this so I can mat out the parts of this thing I don't want. I don't really want that chair. Oops, click on it again. Goodbye chair. And I also definitely want to get rid of these dark spots and shadows in the green screening process, so that'll let me get this a little bit closer to the subject. I have to be careful not to mat out where he might move to or swing his arms, but it looks like I'm pretty safe here. Okay, so far so good. Next I can go back to the effects panel and I can grab that green screen key. And once it's tossed into place, if we had a good mix overall, already you can see he's matted pretty well. Um, the background that we have there, this is going to be a little Drake parody that's taking place. Um, there's more that we can do with this to try to make it look better though. I'm going to try zooming in on the magnification. I took it to 100%. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. You can see that the original green screen application is not perfect. So now I'm going to start to balance threshold and cutoff. And I'm going to start with the threshold. I usually like to take these things to the extreme and work them back. Threshold, we want to bring that down until we can get rid of all the green and it doesn't change anymore. So right about this point here seems good. Frankly, we do want to see it in all the corners though. So I'll take it back to fit and make sure I'm going to get rid of those dark corners. They're the hardest ones to match. So once the line goes away, we're good with threshold. We don't have to take it any further. Next is the cutoff. I'll zoom back in, right mouse click, zoom into 100%, and the cutoff is going to make him more opaque, get rid of his transparency. Blues are hard to do sometimes. As long as the cutoff doesn't go past the threshold, everything should be fine. Too much, and you start to see a little bit of nasty, harsh fringe around the outside, so backing it off just as much as we need, that's going to do the better job. So I got to do it there. Good. That's doing the job too. Now, next, I'll take it back to fitting. So that's all the green screening that we have to do. He's pretty well in there and he will move and everything will work fine with him as long as he stays in his zone. But what I want to do now is to try to make this shadow happen. And it's going to happen pretty easily actually. I'm going to grab this character clip that I have here. It's got all the green screening, everything's done. I'm going to right mouse click it and I'm going to copy it. And then I'll go to a free space on the timeline and I'm going to go edit and paste the clip back in so I get a duplicate. And I'm going to drag it to a layer underneath the original character. So now I got him sort of doubled up here. There he is. Well, same frame. Now I want to pay attention to the, the lower one. And this lower one, I'm going to right mouse click it and I'm going to call it Shadow. Shadow. Just to keep track of it. I'll disable the character on top by right mouse clicking and turning off Enable. So now I can just pay, on, pay attention to this thing and start processing it and turning it into a shadow. And the first thing I do to do that is to go back to that green screen key. And now at the very bottom of this thing you have mask only. So I can turn him into a white silhouette. Next trick, I'd like to change him from being a white silhouette to a black silhouette. More shadow-like. So I'm going to go back to my effects and find advanced adjustments and drag on an image control onto the shadow. And once the image control is in there, I can take the brightness down and turn it black. Great. Next. Shadows are rarely just like that. We're going to want to start mushing them around and shaping them the way we want. So there is a lovely distort effect available. It is called... It is called Corner Pin. There it is. And Corner Pin will go on the shadow. And when I select it in the adjustments, I can now pull these handles down to start flattening this guy. So he looks a little bit more like what you'd expect a shadow to look like. And at this point it's pretty safe to re-enable the upper uh, layer so we can see how this is going to be applied. But be careful, you gotta select the clip, select the corner pin, or things will start to go awry. So if I really flatten this guy out, like this, I may get a decent effect. You know what? A shadow is going to be really flat on the ground like that. I can also simulate a little bit of perspective and a little bit of skew by squeezing the further ones ahead to sort of like emulating what the perspective should look like. And as for the position of the shadow, 
it's pretty easy to go back to the motion of that same clip, grab the, let's see, we have the X and the Y. I'll take the X value and start to slide it back. Hold the shift key down and you get it to skip back by tens. So I've got it pretty well set up. And I know in this shoot, we had the key, the key uh, light was over on the top left, so that shadow should be projected right about there. And I can do a little adjustment here too. Till that foot matches up as good as we can get it. Now, shadows are rarely going to be black and that harsh, so I'll toss back the uh, uh, the motion, open up the opacity, and slide that down to about probably about 30% or so, so it's more shadow-like. And finally, one more one more effect to put on this. I'm going to go to a blur effect and toss on a Gaussian blur, and take the Gaussian blur up to hmm, I'd say about 20, 20 pixels or so. I ought to soften up that blur a little bit. So now, as the video plays, um, it'll actually keep the video, the shadow, and the subject in sync. So we get a pretty, pretty decent effect. And that's your shadow, and that's your keyframing. Good luck. Give it a try.